Hi everyone, I'm Amy Cominter with the Learning and Organizational Development Unit with Ohio State University Extension, and I'm an instructional designer. And here with me today is Jared. Hi all, my name is Jared Morrison. I'm an Organization Development Consultant with the Learning and Organizational Development Unit. And today we're going to be covering preparation for engaged online teaching. I'll share my screen quickly and we will Get going. Make this full screen so it's nice and big for everybody. Engage teaching and preparation is key. So we'll be going into various topics related to preparation for your online session. And when you're preparing for your teaching session to be engaging, you're going to need to prepare your content, your technology, and your environment. So we'll begin with content. When you're preparing your content, you need to think about your lesson plan, which includes your learning objectives, your content to be delivered. So this is the stuff you might typically think of in a lecture and what sort of activities or assessments might go with that. And then it's best practice to put that into an organized framework, whether that is the 4A framework, Webb's depth of knowledge, universal design for learning, um, doesn't particularly matter which framework you choose, but just be sure to keep that well organized and be mindful of all those elements. And when you're designing your content, you're also going to want to think about the overall layout and appearance as well as accessibility. Um, engaging content needs to be well thought out and um, you need to be mindful of that while you create the content. So that might be a PowerPoint slide deck, that might be um, polls or other things you use for activities. And we'll go more into that later. And also think about whether this is a session you can record. If this is a private, topic or an emotionally charged topic, you may not want to record it. And then also be mindful of what sort of evaluation you want on the end, whether that's knowledge gain or whether that's if people found the topic engaging or useful. So just be thinking of your evaluation piece as well. And I want to take a quick moment to just talk about some prep work that was done for this slide deck. Uh, Danae Wolf created this slide deck for us and she put together this color palette, which she verified the color contrast to be accessible um, by using the WebAIM color contrast checker. And so this is just another way to create an accessible design um, by being mindful of the colors and fonts that you choose. And thankfully, our Ohio State University um, branded options have very good fonts and um, color choices for us to pick from. So we'll move on now to technology and Jared's going to take over for us. Great. Thanks, Amy. So once you have your content and lesson plan ready, it's time to consider some other critical pieces of online teaching and education. So we'll start with some basic considerations with technology. And please know that I am not a tech wizard. So what I share uh, briefly here is meant to be fairly base level and hopefully easy enough for anyone with any tech uh, knowledge to follow. So first you need to consider your computer or mobile device that you'll be using and uh, know that most um, programs or platforms have requirements for operating systems and hardware. For example, we're on the Zoom platform, which requires PCs to have Windows 7, Windows 7 or higher or and Macs to have Mac OS 10.10 or higher. And there's similar requirements, uh, minimum requirements for your hardware to ensure that your device is powerful enough to run the platform. After you've confirmed those system requirements, you wanna verify the version of the programs that you plan to use. So if you're using a web-based platform, this may not apply, but if you're using a downloaded program or app such as Zoom or WebEx or another version, this will affect which features are available for use and perhaps more importantly, which security measures you have as the host to use within the session. Uh, if your system and programs are all set, then we can move on to testing. And it's always best to set a test session uh, so you're, you can be sure your speakers, microphone, webcam, and any other accessories are functioning properly. Most programs also have a test feature in the settings for all of your participants to check their functionality as well. 
Uh, it's best practice to use a separate microphone and speakers. For example, a headset, or today I'm using just basic Apple headphones, which usually provide the clearest audio and pick up the least amount of ambient noise, uh, such as typing on your keyboard. Another consideration is accessibility, uh, which is becoming an area of much more scrutiny for many reasons, important reasons. And you need to make sure to make preparations for your documents, resources, and your session to be accessible for all. In terms of live online teaching, your largest consideration are the use of closed captions. And most programs have the ability to assign someone in your room to or in your space to type along for live captions, or many others have um, auto captioning, which use voice recognition software to provide those closed captions. And ensuring that your microphone is set up properly with great audio uh, allows those captions to be uh, up there, maximum performance. Um, so those are a lot of the considerations you have for technology. And once you're set and comfortable with technology, you can move on to your environment. And this is often an overlooked in, uh, piece of online teaching. When uh, folks are planning to teach in person, they spend a lot of time thinking about the space, seating assignments, resources, and materials. And similar thought is needed when you go to online teaching. Uh, so a few of the main areas to think about, number one is your office space or is your lighting. And Amy will talk briefly about this. Thanks, Jared. So with your lighting, you're just going to want to be sure that it looks natural and true to color. You don't want to be really washed out or you don't want your lighting to be really dark. Um, in my case, I have a large window with natural lighting behind me, so the curtains are open. I use a virtual background to sort of soften that because occasionally I look backlit, which we don't want. Um, and then I have a desk lamp in my situation to bounce a little extra light off the wall. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but experiment with your resources. And Jared, you might want to talk a little bit about your setup as well. Great. Yeah. So thanks, Amy. I have um, a window on my left here to provide natural lighting, and I have a soft uh, floor lamp here on my right um, to cover the other side. And so it looks fairly even in my system. So nothing fancy, but it definitely works to even the light out for yourself. Um, and so thanks, Amy. And once you can move beyond lighting, you also want to consider your background or clutter. And so if you're going to be on camera, it's important to think about what's in your background uh, to make sure it's appropriate to be on screen. So consider uh, what objects are there, or if you have a mirror, it may also show things that are in front of you. So just be mindful of what's behind you. You'll see Amy and I are using virtual backgrounds, which is another great uh, possibility to either hide what's back there or just to have a nice professional polished look as these are provided to us by our employer. So consideration there. Next is noise. So as you see our picture of the dog here, you wanna be mindful of pets, or partners, family members, colleagues that might be around you, as well as any other ambient noises that may happen. If you're uh, near a kitchen or a restroom, you may hear uh, microwaves beeping or toilets flushing. So be mindful of those considerations too. And then the final piece is props and resources. So again, when you're in person, you spend a lot of time thinking about this. When you're online, it's also great to think about those. Make sure that they are close at hand, within reach, if you have multiple things you're going to share on your screen, make sure they're all pulled up, downloaded, and ready. And also, don't be afraid to go analog. And so I use cards um, with prompts on them and many other things, and it's great to kind of give a different flair for the audience to see things in an analog format. So have those props and resources close and at hand and prep that in advance. Thanks, Jared. So to quickly review, uh, when you prep for an engaging online session, you need to be mindful and prepare your content, your technology, and your environment. The preparation is key to have a smooth and engaging session for your audience. And we'll take a moment here just to quickly acknowledge Janae Wolf for creating this beautiful branded color palette and slide deck template that we've utilized today. And we've got resources listed for you on the lower portion of the screen. So a contrast checker from WebAIM, which is really nice when you're being mindful about your slide deck design, flyer design, et cetera. 
and um, our email addresses, Jared and myself, if you have questions and would like to contact us. I think that's all we have for this particular session, Jared. Yep, thank you, Amy, and happy teaching, y'all.